What is up guys, welcome back to another Geeky Watt video and today we're looking at some budget mechanical keyboards. Traditionally mechanical keyboards have set you back $150, $160, $170 even, which is ridiculous. So these fall also around that $50 price point. So let's take a look and see what exactly you're sacrificing for that monumental price saving. <laughs> I will of course leave links to all the mentioned keyboards in the description below for a range of regions and retailers with discount codes where applicable. So if you fancy buying any of these or taking a further look, that's in the description. But let's jump into the first keyboard in today's lineup, which is the Moto Speed K875S. Aesthetically, this is my favourite keyboard of the bunch, and if nothing else, it shows that we need more white mechanical keyboards. It really does look incredible. Like all of the other cheap Chinese keyboards on today's list, it's a more compact design and doesn't have a number pad. This is a 10 keyless one, so it retains the full size arrow keys delete page up, page down layout option. Rather neatly, the keyboard also boasts full media controls and quick access to your default music application, my computer and more via the top row of function keys, which is really, really nice. And all of these shortcuts in my experiences work absolutely perfectly. It also features a non-removable, although white, USB cable, and I've actually come to love this keyboard in my recent weeks of using it, so much so that it's earned a place on my desk for the time being. Very, very impressive indeed. Another big factor which makes this keyboard really unique is its dual RGB zones. You get an RGB zone running around the perimeter at the edge of the keyboard, as well as one behind the keys itself. You can browse through all the backlit modes with the FN and M1 and M2 keys on the insert and delete keys above the arrow arrow keys with speed controls available through the FN and arrow key combination. While you do get a huge array of effects such as what I like to call epilepsy mode, these don't feel quite as refined as what you might find on the expensive Corsair or Cooler Master units. The colour wave mode for example is far more jittery as opposed to fluid and just doesn't look quite as nice. Next up is the AN mechanical keyboard and this keyboard is very very small. Uh, this keyboard lacks arrow keys and a number pad and the switches feel really nice. Close to Cherry Mex browns or blacks but with a little bit of a rattle sound that you come to get used to. This keyboard is so small it also lacks a function key row which is mental to think about. Uh, I mean it misses out on some of the neat shortcut functionality and it also means that most of the keys thus need a dual function. This keyboard does however have one ridiculous trick up its sleeve. It's Bluetooth, meaning you can use an included micro USB cable simply to use the keyboard in a normal wired mode or in fact to charge it. They even include a Bluetooth dongle for a PC if you don't already have one, uh, which is something that might already cost you a fiver anyway, which is mental to think about. That's an insane amount of value you're getting in this small package. Not only does that make this a good keyboard for a compact or a small gaming setup, but it also makes it a great travel companion. Taking a keyboard with you on the move can increase productivity, and whether you're connecting it to your phone to write some quick notes, or to a full-fledged computer, this is a really, really impressive feature. This keyboard does, of course, feature full RGB backlight illumination behind all of the keys, much like all of the keyboards on today's list, although the implementation is perhaps the most confusing of all the keyboards on show here. The number of effects is pretty insane, but it takes a good while to browse through and find the one you want. The effects are far smoother and more refined than on the Moto Speed keyboard though, uh, if a little less bright. Sadly it does have a few notable flaws though, it lacks any feet to raise the keyboard up which is a real downer in my opinion, and having no arrow keys can be a real pain, even with the FN key combinations, plus the typeface is pretty disgusting. Next up on this list is a keyboard from Ajaz, and there really is a lot to like with this one. It features a function key row up top uh, with a smaller gap here to help remain compact, uh, but also give you a full-fledged feature set. It's also got a nice, if a little thin, typeface and a range of RGB controls. You also keep arrow keys with a somewhat hybrid design alongside the page up, page down and associated controls, which sit in one vertical row on the right hand side. The lack of space in here makes things a little confusing to the touch. I've mistaken the home button for the backspace key a fair few times, but after half an hour or so, I've really kind of got used to it. 
RGB is controlled on this keyboard through the use of the FN and function row and FN and arrow keys uh, for different effects and there's five levels of brightness which is appreciated. Although I just found the keyboard really lacks that finer control that the others do over its lighting effects. One big bonus with this keyboard is actually its aluminium, not aluminium, aluminium backplate, which makes the keyboard look 10 times more expensive and also diffuses and reflects light really, really nicely. One little quirk with this keyboard that I did find funny is that the included keycap puller isn't actually deep enough to pull the keys off the keyboard, although it does look nice in its red colour I suppose. The final keyboard on today's list is one from Orkey which is perhaps the most well known brand of the bunch. It's the largest although only marginally and has the best feeling if so least grippy keys. It also boasts a very impressive function row with everything from search to my computer and full media controls even a shortcut to the windows calculator. It features a wide range of RGB controls and effects, although the colours all seem a bit too dark, not in their brightness, but in their nature. They're just a bit garish rather than looking nice and bright. Just take a look at the RGB on this keyboard versus the Moto Speed one from earlier and you can see the difference. It is, however, one of the only keyboards on this list to feature scroll lock and caps lock LED indicator lights, which is a fairly necessary feature, and also boasts a Windows lock uh, option, as do all of the keyboards on this list, a necessary feature for gaming. Of all the keyboards on this list, frankly, I'm the most disappointed in this one. Nothing really screams, wow, it's not that amazing, and although it's one of the cheapest on the list, it does leave a lot to be desired, unfortunately. Now that I've taught you through all the keyboards on today's list, which one, if you're in the market for a budget mechanical keyboard should you go for. The white Moto Speed keyboard is the best option if you're looking for a traditional 10 keyless design and definitely looks the best of all of them in my honest opinion. That being said, it does have a non-removable cable and the typeface is a little bit garish. Meanwhile, the AND60% mechanical keyboard is the one to go for if you're looking for something compact for a smaller desk setup or something you can travel with or something that's wireless or a combination of the three. Its small form factor is unique and does take some getting used to, but it's a great option nevertheless. The Ajaz keyboard is the best all rounder to me. The thinner typeface is a little thin, but overall the best with the RGB controls being pretty decent and the form factor pretty neat. The design is out there, but not particularly garish, and I think overall this is the best balance of all the keyboards on this list. Finally, the Orkey unit is sadly the one that I would personally avoid. It's the best option if you love your shortcuts and you're after a reputable brand unit, but it just disappointed and underwhelmed me a little bit, although it is the cheapest on this list. But that, I think, just about wraps it up for today's video. I've been really impressed by all the keyboards on show here, and a massive shout out to Gearbest for sending out three of the four keyboards, and Orky for sending over theirs at my request. If you want to buy any of them, links in the description below with discount codes where applicable. If you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button, subscribe for more, hit me up on all the socials, but as always, we'll see you in the next Geeko Up video.